On June 17, 1972, five men are arrested in the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee in the Watergate office complex in Washington, D.C. President Nixon is in the Bahamas. White House Chief of Staff H.R. Bob Haldeman is in Key Biscayne. June 20th, 1972, three days later, was the first time that President Nixon and Haldeman talked about Watergate around the microphones. Mr. Haldeman took copious notes of his meetings with the President um, in the Nixon materials, uh, Nixon Library. There are probably 300 boxes of his notes on yellow paper. You can follow Haldeman's notes. The President is talking about a letter he wants to send to the Governor of South Dakota. And suddenly, the conversation sh shifts from South Dakota to Watergate. You can see that in the notes, and the gap begins. Since there is a gap in the tape, the notes would then be the backup to that. However, there is very little in the notes about the uh, meeting itself. I'm Phil Mellinger. Uh, I'm an amateur historian that's been doing some Watergate research for the past uh, five or six years. I knew there were two pages of notes from the meeting, and I talked to the, the, the archivist, and he, and he was very kind and pulled out the notes and showed them to me. And when I looked at them, it, it immediately hit me that this couldn't have been the complete set of notes from the meeting. In a typical Oval or Executive Office building meeting for an hour and a half, there could be as many as five or six pages of notes more than, obviously, than two pages. And I knew from reading Haldeman's diaries that Nixon's inner core had gone through their files and made sure they were clean. One thing people notice right away with these, these two pages is the multiple staple holes here, which indicate, obviously, staple removed, staple removed, staple removed. It occurred to me that I, we could actually do impression analysis on the remaining pages. Mr. Mellinger brought forth the, the idea that uh, modern Forensic technology might be able to produce, be able to reveal indented writing here on page two that would have been what was on any intervening pages. For the uh, forensic work done on the notes, we first went to the Library of Congress where images were taken of, of the two pages of notes front and back under varying spectrums of light. We then went to Inspector General Internal Revenue Treasury Department's lab paper is applied to a vacuum table and a very thin sheet of plastic is placed over it and the vacuum sucks the plastic in such a way that it adheres to every indentation in the paper. Then electrostatic charge is put to the plastic. Material very similar to toner from uh, an ink cartridge is put over that and then another sheet of plastic is put over there. An image then adheres to the, the second sheet of plastic which can get peeled off which should reveal any indented writing on that sheet of plastic. I don't have any expectations. My hope is that the forensics will show the topics that were discussed in the meeting. After our testing with the method suggested by Mr. Mellinger, um, we determined that there was indented writing on page two, but it looks like a signature and it's illegible. A surprising finding was that at the upper left of Page one is a date written, and on the upper left of page two is a number two. These two bits of information were written in a different ink from the main body of the notes. Future historians will have to determine the significance of ink differences, and possibly in the future, additional work can be done on the tape itself. We were unable to recover any additional information regarding the content of the meeting between uh, Mr. Nixon and Mr. Haldeman.